All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have the definite integral from zero to two of x minus three dx. And so we'll start by finding the antiderivative of this function and we'll go term by term. And so we'll have that this is equal to x to the power of one plus one divided by one plus one minus three x, right? So we use the power rule on x and we added one to the exponent of one. So we have one plus one divided by that new exponent, one plus one. And then we subtracted three x because when you have a constant and you integrate it, you multiply it by the variable that you are integrating with respect to. In this case, we are integrating with respect to x. That's what dx tells us right here. And so we multiplied three by x. And then of course we want to evaluate this from zero to two. And so if we simplify, this will be equal to x squared divided by two minus three x. And we're still evaluating it from zero to two. But now our next step will be to plug in two into this function and then subtract plugging zero into this function, right? Because if we have an integral from a to b of some function f of x dx, that is equal to the antiderivative evaluated at b minus the antiderivative evaluated at a. And so that is what we are going to do right here. This is equal to two squared divided by two minus three times two, and we're going to subtract zero plugged into this function. And so we'll have zero squared divided by two minus three times zero. And so both of these terms will just be zero because zero squared divided by two is zero and three times zero is zero. And so we don't need to worry about these two terms and instead we'll focus on these two. And so if we continue the work up here, this will be equal to two squared, which is four divided by two and then minus three times two, which is six. And so we'll have that this is equal to two minus six, which is equal to negative four. And so that would be the final answer to this definite integral. Let's look at another example. All right, so for our next example, we have the definite integral from negative one to zero of two x minus one squared. And so the first thing that we're going to want to do to solve this definite integral is to square this term here, and then we'll be able to integrate each term that results from the expansion of squaring this term. And so if we do that on the side here, we'll have two x minus one times two x minus one. And if we multiply these together or use the FOIL method, we'll have two x times two x, and that will be four x squared. Then we'll multiply two x by negative one, so we'll have minus two x. Then we'll multiply negative one by two x. And so we'll have another minus two x. And then we'll have negative one times negative one, which is positive one. And so if we add our two like terms together here, negative two x and negative two x, we'll have four x squared minus four x plus one. And so we can replace this quantity squared with this quadratic right here. And we'll have that this is equal to the integral from negative one to zero of four x squared minus four x plus one dx. And so now we can integrate each of these terms and find the antiderivative of our function here and then evaluate it at zero and negative one. And so this will be equal to four times x to the power of two plus one divided by two plus one minus four times x to the power of one plus one divided by one plus one plus x. Right, so we use the power rule for our first term here. We added one to our exponent to get x to the power of two plus one. And then we divided by that new power of two plus one. And then we also use the power rule for our second term. So we add x to the power of one plus one and divided by one plus one. And then we use the constant rule for one and we just multiplied it by x. And so one times x is x. And then of course we're going to evaluate this from negative one to zero. And so if we simplify, this will be equal to four times x to the third power divided by three minus four times x squared divided by two plus x, and that's still evaluated from negative one to zero. And so if we clean up our work here a little bit, we can simplify this one more time, and this will be equal to four thirds times x cubed minus four divided by two is just two, so two x squared plus x, and that will still be evaluated from negative one to zero. And so if we plug zero into this function, we'll have that this is equal to four divided by three times zero cubed minus two times zero squared plus zero minus, and then we're going to subtract all of the terms when plugging negative one into this function. So remember to keep them all in parentheses. And so we'll have four divided by three times negative one cubed minus two times negative one squared plus negative one. And so all of these terms right here are just going to be zero because zero times anything 
is zero, and then we're just adding zero. And so this is equal to zero minus four thirds times negative one cubed. Negative one cubed is negative one, so negative one times four thirds is negative four thirds. And then we have negative two times negative one squared, so we just have negative two times one, and so we'll have minus two, and then we're adding negative one, so you'll have minus one. And so then if we distribute this negative into each part, this will be equal to four thirds plus two plus one, which if you add these up together, two plus one is three, and three represented in thirds would be nine thirds. And so you'd have nine thirds plus four thirds, which is equal to 13 thirds. And that is the final answer to this definite integral. Let's look at another example. All right, so for our next example, we have the definite integral from one to nine of y minus two divided by the square root of y dy. And so you'll notice right off the bat here that we are integrating with respect to a different variable. We have dy instead of dx, and our function is defined with y and not x. So we're gonna be working with the variable of y in this case, which is just to mix things up a little bit here so that we get used to using some different variables. And so the first thing that we are going to want to do is to rewrite this square root of y to be y to the one half power. And that's going to make it easier for us to manipulate this function to look like a function that we know how to integrate. Because in its current state, we don't really know how to integrate this function. It looks pretty complicated. But if we rewrite this to y to the one half power, that would be a good first step in trying to simplify this function. And so this will be equal to the integral from one to nine of y minus two divided by y to the one half power. And so then what we can do is split up this fraction into two separate fractions. We can have y divided by y to the one half power and then minus two divided by y to the one half power. And so we'll have that this is equal to the integral from one to nine of y divided by y to the one half power minus two divided by y to the one half power. And that would all be multiplied by dy. And so then what we can do is we can rewrite these terms again but use some of the rules that we know about exponents to move the denominators to the numerator by making the exponents negative. And so if we rewrite that, this will be equal to the integral from one to nine of y times y to the negative one half power minus two times y to the negative one half power. Right, and so all we did there was move the denominators to the top by making their exponent negative and then of course we need to multiply it by the numerators. And so then if we simplify this term right here, this would be y to the first power, right? And so when you multiply two terms together with the same base, right? So if I have x to the third power times x squared, the answer is x to the fifth power. And to get that, we added the exponents of our two terms, right? We added three and two to get five. In this case, it's the same deal, but we have y to the first power times y to the negative one half power. So if we add one and negative one half, we will get positive one half. And so we can rewrite this integral to look like this. We'll have the integral from one to nine of y to the one half power minus two times y to the negative one half power. And then we have dy. All right, so now we have manipulated our function and we have it in a state that we now know how to take the integral of or how to find the antiderivative for. And so we can use the power rule for each of our terms and this will be equal to y to the power of one half plus one divided by one half plus one minus two times y to the power of negative one half plus one divided by negative one half plus one and that will be evaluated from one to nine. And so then if we simplify this, it will be equal to y to the power of three halves, right? One half plus one is three halves, and that will be divided by three halves, and then we're gonna subtract two times y to the one half power, because negative one half plus one is one half, so we'll have y to the one half power divided by negative one half plus one, so we'll have one half down there as well. And that's still evaluated from one to nine. And so then to make this easier to look at, if you remember when you divide by a fraction, that is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. And so we can rewrite this again to have that this is equal to two thirds times y to the three halves power minus two and then times two divided by one, which would be the reciprocal of one half. And so that's just going to be two. So we're gonna be multiplying by another two times y to the one half power. And that is evaluated from one to nine. And so if we clean up our work here, we can simplify this one more time, and we will have that this is equal to two thirds times y to the three halves power minus four times the square root of y. 
and that will be evaluated from 1 to 9. Right, so all I did was multiply these 2's together to get 4, and rewrote y to the 1 half power to be the square root of y, because that's going to be nicer to look at when we evaluate our function at 9 and 1. And so that's our next step. We'll plug in 9 into our function here. And so this will be equal to 2 thirds times 9 to the 3 halves power minus 4 times the square root of 9. And then we'll close that and subtract 1 plugged into this function. And so we'll have a quantity here of 2 thirds times 1 to the 3 halves power minus 4 times the square root of 1. And then we'll close it. And so let's clean up our work here again. If we're going to simplify this, we have to know what taking 9 to the 3 halves power means. And taking a value to the 3 halves power is the same as taking the square root of a value cubed. And so we'll rewrite this and we'll have that this is equal to 2 thirds times 9 cubed and we'll have the square root of that. So it's the square root of 9 cubed. That is what 9 to the 3 halves power is. And then we'll subtract 4 times 3 because the square root of 9 is 3. And then we'll have minus 2 thirds times 1 to the 3 halves power. 1 to the power of anything is just 1. And so we're just going to have 2 thirds times 1 and then minus 4 times 1 because the square root of 1 is 1. And so 9 cubed is 729. And so if I just rewrite that real quick, we'll have 729. And the square root of 729 is 27. And so this will be equal to 2 thirds times 27 minus 12 minus, and let's distribute this negative to each part of this quantity, we we'll have minus 2 thirds plus 4. And so then 2 thirds times 27 is equal to 18, and then we have negative 12 and positive 4, so if I add 4 to negative 12, we will have negative 8, and then we're still subtracting those 2 thirds, and then if we subtract 8 and 2 thirds from 18, that will be equal to 28 thirds, and that would be the final answer to this definite integral. Let's look at one more final example. All right, so for our last example, we have the integral from zero to three of the absolute value of two x minus three dx. All right, so this is a bit of a tricky one because we don't really know how to take the integral of an absolute value function. However, we can use one of the properties of integrals known as the additive interval property to solve this definite integral. And in order to see how to use that property, we're going to need to look at the graph of this function. And so we'll start by finding this function's vertex. And all we have to do to do that is set what is inside the absolute value bars equal to zero and solve for x. And that will give us the x value of where the vertex is. And so in this case, we have 2x minus 3 is equal to zero. And then if we add 3 to both sides, we'll have 2x is equal to 3. And if we divide both sides by 2, x will be equal to 3 halves. And so that tells us that the x value of the vertex of this absolute value function is that x equals 3 halves. And if we were to plug this back into this absolute value function or the function in our integrand, we would find that the y value would be 0. And so our vertex will be found at the 3 halves mark on our x axis and it's got a height of zero or a y value of zero, and so our vertex is right here, which means that our function is going to look like this, right? Because absolute value functions always have this V shape. And so we are integrating this function, the absolute value of two X minus three from zero to three, and that means that we are trying to find the area under this function from the X values of zero to three. And so then on our graph over here, we are looking to find the area under this function from zero to three. And so if we shade in that area that we are talking about here, you can get a visual representation of what we are trying to solve for. We are looking for this area right in here. And so what the additive interval property allows us to do is split this definite integral up into two different integrals, one where we calculate this area from zero to our vertex and a second integral where we calculate the area from our vertex to the upper bound of three. And the reason why that's going to work for this absolute value function is because we can treat each of these lines as two separate functions that are not absolute value functions, right? And so this half of the function where we have a positive slope, this is going to be the function 2x minus 3 without any absolute value bars. But then this side of the function where we have a negative slope, it's going to be the function inside the absolute value bars, but negated. And so here is what our two definite integrals will look like we'll have that this integral right here is equal to the integral from zero to three halves, right? We're starting with this area right here of the function negative two x minus three 
dx, right? So we took our function inside the absolute value bars and negated it, and that will give us the function of this line right here that we're looking at from zero to three halves. And then we can add this to the area or the integral from three halves to three, which would be this section of this function or this line, which is just going to be two x minus three. So we'll have two x minus three dx. And so a quick trick to integrating absolute value functions is to find your vertex by setting what is inside the absolute value bars equal to zero, solve for x, and that is going to be the bound that you're going to use to split up your integral. So we were going from zero to three, but now we have two integrals, one going from zero to that vertex, and then from that vertex to the upper bound. And then to figure out what your functions are inside each of your integrals, your first half from your lower bound to that vertex will be a negated version of what is inside your absolute value bars. And then the second half from your vertex to the upper bound will just be the regular or positive version of what is inside your absolute value bars. And so if we clean up our work here a little bit, we can go through and integrate both of these functions. But first, let me just distribute this negative to each part of this quantity. And if we do that, we'll have negative two x and positive three. And so I'll just rewrite this and we'll have negative two x plus three. All right, and so now we can go through and integrate these functions. And so we'll start with our first integral here. We'll have that this is equal to negative two times x to the power of two divided by two plus three x, and that will be evaluated from zero to three halves, plus two times x squared divided by two minus three x evaluated from three halves to three. Okay, and so then we can simplify each of these terms by noting that this two and this two will cancel out, and so will these two twos. And so if we rewrite this, we'll have that this is equal to negative x squared plus three x, evaluated from zero to three halves plus x squared minus three x evaluated from three halves to three. And since I have two definite integrals here, it's probably a good idea to box these in entirely. Typically I don't do that with this notation. I just put it at the end of our function, but it's probably a good idea to have that around the whole function when you have two different definite integrals that you're working with in the same problem. But anyway, if we clean up our work here, we can evaluate each of these functions on their bounds. And so we'll start with our first function here. This will be equal to negative three halves squared plus three times three halves minus zero plugged into this function. And just notice that zero plugged into x squared will be zero and zero plugged into three x will also be zero. So we're just subtracting zero, but then we're going to add three plugged into this function. And so we'll have three squared minus three times three and then we're gonna be subtracting three halves plugged into this function. And so we'll have three halves squared minus three times three halves. And so then if we simplify, three halves squared is nine fourths. So this will be equal to negative nine fourths plus three times three divided by two will be nine halves. And then we just have minus zero. So we don't need to write that. Three squared is equal to nine. So we'll have plus nine and then three times three is also nine, so minus nine. And then we're gonna subtract three halves squared. So we're going to have minus nine fourths. And then we're going to distribute this negative to this term. So we'll have plus three times three halves, which is going to be plus nine halves. And so then notice that this positive nine and this negative nine will cancel out because they'll just add up to zero. And then we have two negative nine fourths and we have two positive nine halves. And so if we add negative nine fourths and negative nine fourths, this will be equal to negative nine halves. And then we have nine halves plus nine halves, which would be 18 halves. And then we'd have negative nine halves plus 18 halves, which would be equal to positive nine halves. And so that would be the final answer to this definite integral. And so that is how you would evaluate a definite integral for an absolute value function. And so with that, that was the last example for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.